This wonderful story begins with one little girl who will then, in time, grow into a beautiful lady who will win the hearts of many men. In her very childhood, the forest was her only refuge. There were the spreading petals of flowers, the sweet singing of birds, even the little animals she loved so much to caress. As a child, she almost always played alone. However, she had one very friendly stranger she met one day. And now came the moment of parting, and the girl with tears in her eyes took up his mantle and asked, Will they never see each other again? But the man stroked her head to calm her down and told her with a smile on his face that he would definitely come back to see her again. But she did not stop and continued to hold him by his clothes, asking hopefully when he would return. The man was silent for a while. He did not know what to say, for he did not know when he would return. Then he simply crouched down, in order to be level with her, and reached his hands up to her back to clasp the girl tightly in his arms. As he hugged her, he said in a quiet voice right in her ear that he would definitely come to her when she desperately wanted him to. It was also hard for him to part with her. However, he had no choice. In fact, this stranger was the first person to introduce the girl to separation and was meant to hurt her. But in the end, he brought her so much happiness when he played with her that she couldn't even resent him for leaving, leaving her all alone like that. But still, she was unbearably hurt when they parted, and with tears in her eyes, the girl asked that he not go and leave her. In fact, at that moment, she was afraid that she would not see him again soon, perhaps not even ever. The man didn't say anything. He just started walking away, not even turning around. Recently, the girl very often recalls these moments, because in the place where she now finds herself, there is not at all sweet. When she woke up, she realized that it was only a dream. She was still lying in her tattered clothes in the dungeon on the cold floor, all alone. But at that moment, a man suddenly approached her. He asked her if she was really standing, lost, how she could sleep in peace. The girl recognized him by his voice, but did not want to turn and look at this terrible man. He sat back in his chair and looked down at her, asking in a sweet voice with a hint of irony, if maybe he should punish her and teach her a lesson. The girl, who was all beat up because she was being bullied, began to get up heavily, for she was in a lot of pain, and said, interrupting, that he wasn't going to stop it anyway, actually. The stranger smilingly looked at her and said that lately she had become somewhat even-tempered, and asked if she had gone to her mother, who lived shamelessly in the palace of Calix. But the girl looked at him with all the hatred she could muster, and calling him by his name Rafe, asked him to behave like an emperor, if that was what he was after all. This made the man very angry, and he furrowed his eyebrows, saying that apparently she had apparently had very little of that, since she dared to say such things. He began to get up from his chair and walk closer to the girl, asking if she really thought that the bastard child of the late emperor had a chance to inherit the family lineage. He called her the fake Princess Celeste Calix, and then he took his whip to punish her properly. Rafe began to beat her, and the marks on Celeste's back began to show where the blood was pouring out. He kept telling her to cry out in pain. But the princess was so used to it that she didn't care at all, and she didn't even have tears left for all this anymore. While the man was beating her, she just sat there and endured it all, waiting for it to be over. When he saw that she had no emotion on her face, he started screaming even louder and asked her to sob and just beg for mercy. Celeste just sat there without shedding a tear. In fact, her half-brother Rafe had started bullying her as soon as he'd gotten the throne. Her father is a past emperor of the Calix Empire. She was pleased when he took her and her mom to the palace, for it meant a new, better life. And even though the empress and her son were also there, she still found the family she had longed for. But her happiness didn't last long. Her parents soon died, and Rafe began to take out his hatred and anger for the world on her body. She tried to beg and resist, but all she got in return was ridicule. His only desire is to humiliate her. So the girl eventually just got used to it and stopped reacting to it all, and Rafe at this point was completely hating and forcefully slapping her on the back, telling her to apologize for her wrong. But the girl only smiled at this and asked what wrong the princess, 
who lived in a separate building, had helped to do. It was not her fault. Of course she paid for those words with more blood. Rafe stopped talking to her and started hitting her even harder. She lay on the cold floor of the dungeon, and when he finished beating her, she asked if he should just kill her. But Rafe asked with a sneer why on earth he should. The girl told him to just keep hitting her and not to stop. He got even more angry. His body started to shake, and he squeezed the whip so hard that he almost broke it. Celeste had been able to learn his behavior over so many years. At the moment, he was just furious, and that could last a month or even two. But suddenly, to her surprise, Rafe threw the whip aside. When the girl heard the sounds, she looked at him in surprise, not realizing what was happening. Her half-brother began to adjust his sleeves, and despite her face, said that he had changed his mind about doing it, for it was making him very tired. He said that there was no point in keeping her in this place, since she didn't obey the emperor's orders. So he decided to exile her somewhere far away from this place. He crouched down in order to be level with the girl, and said that he also had good news for her. Rafe told her that the banquet would begin that day, which would last for three whole days, and after that he would release her. Celeste, hearing this, was very surprised. However, the man did not stop and said that there was one but. According to the laws of the empire, her ankles would be cut off. When she heard this, she was simply terrified. Her expression showed all the nightmare and fear she had experienced. Rafe smiled and said that her expression changed only at times like that, and he liked to see how afraid she was of him. Celeste suddenly began to protest. She asked why she should chop her legs off, because it would be enough to send her away, and he would never see her again in his life. She thought it would be appropriate to give her some status and contentment, since he wanted to exile members of the imperial family, and a punishment like chopping off their ankles was only given to those who seriously broke the law. But Rafe smiled and said that if she was just a secret illegitimate child of the imperial family, she would become a lady and just leave, even with all her limbs. However, since she is the only princess of the Calix Empire, this is one of the greatest things the previous emperor went to. The man swept the hair away from her face and said that the fact that she was an illegitimate daughter and became an official princess was a great sin. Celeste abruptly removed his hand from her face and glared at him angrily, not understanding why on earth he was doing all this. But the man only smiled and said that it was not his fault. She must blame the laws of the empire, and he was only a man to enforce them. He started to leave and lastly said that she could also blame the fate that brought her to this palace. He didn't care what she chose, the fact remained. The banquet was over, and three days later Celeste was able to leave the dungeon. She finally, after all these years, saw the sunlight she had missed so much. Either that day or the next she'll have her legs chopped off and be chased out of this place. For now, she's allowed to get some fresh air. The girl came out of the little hut she had been living in all the time, well, like living in her basement, and when she saw the sunlight, she realized that she had missed it so much because it was so beautiful. But at that moment her head suddenly became dizzy. She looked down and realized that she needed to think about the future. However, her body was still so exhausted that she couldn't do anything great. As soon as she wanted to step forward, she immediately fell onto the green grass, for she was too weak to do so. The girl lay on top of her, enjoying her softness and smells, and tears began to come to her eyes. She thought that she didn't care at all about the banishment. However, she did not know how to protect her ankles. But at that moment she suddenly heard someone's voice. It was a woman's voice, and he ran up to her, addressing the girl, calling her princess. When Celeste lifted her head and looked forward, she saw the maid, who was in tears, running straight toward her and saying that she couldn't just lie there on the grass like that. She then ran closer to her and, seeing her torn back, began to cry, saying that she must have been beaten again. The girl, who was already treating this as routine, replied in a calm voice that this time they didn't hit as much, but with great force. The maid began to take off her clothes and told her she would apply the medicine, 
and asked her to speak up if she was in a lot of pain. Celeste thanked her. And so, while a maid named Terega tearfully applied a special medicine to her, the girl thought about what she should do after all. She's stuck in a separate building with no one to even ask for help, and she certainly can't defeat Emperor Rafe. Celeste kept thinking of different things and imagining different options when suddenly someone started walking towards them. The maid noticed the stranger first. She turned to the princess and said that she had a visitor. The girl was very surprised to hear this and asked what other visitor could have come. But when she began to raise her head to see who it was, she could not see their faces, for the sun was blinding her, and her eyesight had deteriorated many times over during the time she had been in the dungeon. When she looked more closely, she still couldn't figure out who it was. It was a man with blonde, long hair, and there was someone else standing next to him. The blonde-haired man looked around and said the place was rather dilapidated, and Celeste still couldn't figure out who these people were. No matter how many times she looked at them, there was still no way she could recognize those faces. But she could tell from the blonde man's gaze that he was sizing her up. Celestia didn't like that very much. She started to throw the torn dress back over her shoulders and angrily asked who they were and added that no outsiders were allowed in this place. The man looked at her in surprise and asked, Is this really the fake princess? The girl looked at him without losing the menacing look on her face, thinking he was just using derogatory terms to appear more serious. So she told him to introduce himself first in that case, since he had come to the princess's private areas, and also to have him explain his purpose for the visit. The maid, who stood behind the girl, was shaking with fear, for she recognized the man and did not understand how she could talk to him like that at all. The blonde-haired man was silent for a while and just stared at her. He realized that apparently she didn't know who he was. Then the guy who was standing next to him explained that it was Batizo, the very ruler of the Kelinev Empire about this place. Emperor Calix told him and also apologized for not informing her in advance of his visit. Celeste immediately realized that she had said a lot of unnecessary things. Then she bowed and apologized for not recognizing the great Emperor Batizu, but she was actually very surprised that he had come, because never had the Emperor come in yet. Then ordinary nobles didn't visit. She also apologized for not being able to invite him inside. Well, the man turned around and started walking off to the side somewhere saying he wasn't going in. Then he turned to the Tarkan and said that he was leaving. The maid was still impressed. She moved closer to the princess and said in her ear that the ruler of the empire himself had paid them a visit. And Celeste asked, Was Kalinev a strong country, and was it even bigger than their empire? Then, suddenly, the emperor's aide walked up to them and cheerfully said that of course she was much stronger than Calix. The maid didn't expect him to hear them, much less respond. The girl concluded to herself at this point that in such a case, the emperor would not come to her just like that for there must be a good reason for him to come to them. Celeste couldn't stand it then and apologized to the assistant. Then she asked why they had come in the first place, when the guy explained that his majesty just wanted to attend a banquet with the princess. The girl, hearing this, was incredibly surprised. She clenched her hand into a fist, not realizing what was happening. And then she realized that if Kalinov was stronger than Calix after all, it would be her only person who could challenge Rafe. Then she looked out from behind his aide's back and watched the emperor walk off into the distance. Celeste still couldn't believe that he had come all the way out this far, specifically for her. But at that moment, the guy spoke again to her and, smiling, said that he was in this place on behalf of his majesty. And then he suddenly remembered that he had completely forgotten to introduce himself. The boy bowed and did everything now as he believed. He said he was insanely pleased to meet the princess, and also explained that he was a Turkan aide to His Majesty Batizo. The girl was very surprised at such a brief greeting. The man in turn said that she could just call him Turkan and speak informally. Celeste was surprised and asked if she could really call him by his first name. The man explained that he didn't have a title or last name, so, yes. The girl, hearing about him not having a title, was surprised. In fact, this guy didn't look like a commoner, and they went somewhere further away. A glimpse of his appearance. 
the kind of elegance that left indescribable feelings. And even with her limited knowledge of the world, she could tell that he was at least an aristocrat. Well then suddenly the Turkin felt someone's gaze on his face and immediately looked at the girl. And she in turn, when she saw him turn toward her, immediately turned away, pretending to look at something in the distance. But the guy didn't avert his gaze after that. Then she already looked at him in surprise, not understanding why he was watching her so intently. The girl was very surprised at this behavior of the guy, because he did not take his eyes off her for a second. And then Celeste saw his hand suddenly reach for her face. Her heart fluttered immediately, and she didn't realize what was happening. She suggested that it was all because she hadn't seen anyone new in a long time, and that's why she was so nervous about this meeting. Turkan, at this moment, removed a few strands of hair from her face and smiled happily when he saw her large and beautiful eyes. The girl had a kind of feeling at that moment, as if she had met someone she had missed for so long. He suddenly started running his fingers through her hair, and she felt even more uncomfortable. Her cheeks flushed, and she realized that this was definitely a mistake. In the meantime, Turkin had just removed a small leaf that had fallen from the tree onto her beautiful golden-colored hair. He suddenly smiled awkwardly, and pointing to the sheet, told her it was stuck in her hair. The girl was shocked. In fact, she was even embarrassed by the thoughts that were in her head, and embarrassed she thought that he had just scared her. In fact, for a moment, his gaze became so kind that she almost mistook them for the man who had been in her life as a child. They went on, and Sylvester in turn asked if she had to go somewhere with him. The boy answered that there would be a banquet at Calix's palace. When she heard this, she was very surprised, and said that apparently they had not been warned. Then she thought about it, and said that she shouldn't know about everything. The girl at this point began to remember and realize that Rafe might have mentioned something like that. Turkin glimpsed at her and said that no one had seen fit to inform the princess herself which angered him. Celeste clutched her dress tighter, for she was beginning to worry. The girl realized that news of her reputation had reached other countries. However, says so directly, she did not understand how it could be so. She then looked at him and said that he must be very familiar with her circumstances. The guy confirmed this and said that in general, His Majesty Batizo's situation was different. At that moment he suddenly stopped and looked her straight in the eye, saying that he wished to repeat that the emperor wished to attend the banquet with her. The girl thought at that moment that this was the problem. She has no plan of action. Rafe is going to cripple her legs and just banish her from the empire. He couldn't just change his mind in a couple days. Now, however, she realized that something had changed anyway, but she didn't know for sure what it was. At that moment, the girl suddenly felt a stare on her face from Turkin, and even got a little embarrassed. But the guy smiled at this point and said that they would send a dress for her because the outfit she was wearing wouldn't fit. He also asked that she change her clothes and get ready for that time. The girl was very surprised. However, the guy bowed and said that he would come for her at the beginning of the banquet, and now he had to go. Celeste at this point asked that he stop, for there was something else she wanted to tell him. The girl was starting to get very worried about this. Pulling herself by her fingers, she wondered if His Majesty Rafe had authorized it. Turkin, when he noticed this, was silent for a while. And after that, turning around, he replied that he didn't really need anyone's permission. It was an order from His Majesty Batizo. He said the last words with all the hatred and anger he could muster. The girl noticed that his facial expression became very cold very quickly and this man was definitely hiding the power he possessed behind his smile. She realized that she'd better not pounce and get caught in the hot hand, so she took her gaze away from him and said that she understood, and also added that in that case they would see each other soon. And so far only one thing was clear to Celestia, and that was that Batiza was certainly stronger than Rafe. Soon she and her maid returned to the lodge, and they were finally sent the very dress that Turkan had spoken of. When the maid saw it, she almost squealed with joy throughout the house. She told Madame that it was amazing. It really was. The dress was incredibly luxurious. When she opened the box, she pulled out some cloth and told Mistress that they had even brought a lining to cover up her scars in the exposed areas. 
Celeste looked at the dress and said that she wasn't really sure that she would fit into such a garment. But the maid laughed and told her not to be silly, because it would look good on her. Then she looked hopefully at the mistress and asked if she could help her change her clothes, but the girl immediately became embarrassed and said that there was no need to do that. She could do it herself. And at the same time, she took her new dress and went behind the screen. Celeste immediately threw off her tattered clothes and hung them on the wall. As she undressed, she asked Terega if she knew anything at all about Emperor Kalinev. The maid went to the screen to retrieve the old clothes and said that she had actually heard that he was from the Black Wing clan, and this man has become known for aggressively expanding the Empire's territories. There are even fears that they may attack Calix as well. Celeste, as she buttoned her new dress, remembered that this country was too big to declare war on it at once. But at that moment, she realized there was no way she could manage the buttons on her back and asked the maid to help her with them. She came out from behind the screen, and the girl was incredibly beautifully dressed. The dress suited her very well, but Celeste felt uncomfortable in it and asked the maid if she could wear it at all. Tarega, when she saw her in that beautiful outfit, screamed in surprise. The girl asked in surprise, wondering if there was a problem or if she was wearing something wrong, but tears immediately came to the maid's eyes, and she covered her mouth with her hands, saying that the princess was just incredibly enchanting. Now Celestia had it all figured out, and her assistant asked that she turn around and she would help her button that dress all the way up. The girl immediately thanked her for that. While Terega was buttoning up, she said that it was heartbreaking to have to live in a separate building and to be beaten up all the time, as if she didn't have enough problems. Tears immediately began to well up in Celestia's eyes. However, she quickly held back her emotions. In fact, her words always touched her to the core. However, the girl preferred to think rationally and realized that now was not the best time for such emotions. She needed to come to her senses, because the difficulties were just beginning. Soon the sun was already starting to go below the horizon, illuminating the sky with incredibly beautiful colors. All the preparations were finally finished, and Turkin had also already arrived at her house and was standing outside waiting for the girl. And after a while, the door did open. He immediately stepped back so that the girl could get out and turned to look at her. Celeste was incredibly beautiful. The maid also helped her to tidy her hair and put a small flower behind her ear. When she came out and saw him, she asked him with a smile on her face how long he had been waiting for her. Turkin, seeing such a beautiful girl, could not even utter a word. He just stood staring at her for a while. After that, he seemed to come to his senses, and holding out his hand to her, he said, Right. They say clothes change a person, but it still surprised him. The girl asked if he could say more honestly if she looked good. She took him under her arm, and they went on their way. The man smiled awkwardly and said that what he really meant was that it suited her very well, and also added that His Majesty the Batiza was already waiting in the hall. The girl was a little uneasy. However, she realized that now was the moment of truth. She had to get answers to all her questions, no matter what the cost. Soon they finally arrived at the very castle where the banquet was held. Celeste, before even stepping inside, was already overwhelmed by its majesty and beauty. The imperial palace was incredibly luxurious. In fact, she couldn't go in there as a child because the aristocrats were against the whole thing, and so she had to just admire it from the outside. Turkin, seeing her mesmerized look, said that members of ruling families shouldn't show their admiration so obviously. The girl, hearing this, was very surprised. She didn't think that noble families were not allowed to express their emotions, and the man turned away from her and told her to try to show nobility. Turkin said she had to keep her lips closed when she wasn't talking or eating. The girl was annoyed by this, because these were basic things, and she hadn't been taught the behavior of the imperial family, so she wouldn't be able to argue about it. Soon they were finally inside, and Celeste thought that his words might have been polite, but now she felt like an uninvited guest, and she didn't know the simplest rules of behavior. When the girl found herself inside, she immediately felt awkward. After all, all the gazes that were present at that banquet were directed at her alone. Many of the guests were surprised that she showed up at this place, 
Others, on the contrary, were angry that she dared to do so. They walked forward, and the girl could hear all the conversations of the people behind her back. Many people wondered if this woman was really a fake princess. Many did not recognize her from the beginning. Other ladies and aristocrats said that even a fake would look real in such clothes. So it's not surprising. As Celeste walked farther and farther, she could feel their stares on her, and she gasped at them. Her head was spinning. Turkin suddenly turned to her, and despite even her, asked that she keep her back straight. She straightened up immediately, and when he told her not to look at him, she turned away. She felt even more awkward and uncomfortable in this place. He said that the dignity of the imperial family lies in confidence, and she should not make her expression too stern, but lift the corners of her lips. Celeste immediately began to follow his directions and walked straight ahead so as not to let him down. As they passed farther and farther away, the people melted away, and the girl saw the very Emperor Rafa sitting in the middle of the hall, gazing majestically at his domain. His assistant leaned over and said in a whisper that Princess Celestna had already arrived. He looked menacingly in the girl's direction and said nothing. They soon approached, and Turkin bowed before Rafe, addressing his majesty, thanking him for giving them such an honor to attend the banquet. The girl also curtsied, as the lady supposes. Rafe didn't want to look at his half-sister, so he turned away, saying that he really hoped they all enjoyed themselves, without much enthusiasm to do so. The girl could not understand why the host of this feast looked so annoyed and even upset. But then she suddenly remembered that there should also be another very important person at the banquet, namely Batisu. But looking around, she couldn't see him. She looked over at the special guest table and tried to get a good look at where he was sitting. Celeste was soon able to find him with her gaze after all, and suddenly felt very uncomfortable. It was the uncomfortable that made her feel uncomfortable, because she noticed the emperor looking directly into her eyes without taking his gaze away. As he drank wine from his glass, also never taking his eyes off her, Celeste didn't understand what was going on or why he was looking at her so intently. The girl realized that she would need to convince him at all costs to escape from this place. However, after the look on his face, she was no longer sure she would be up to the task. Turkin, who was standing next to her, suddenly looked at the girl and followed her gaze. He didn't understand why she was staring so intently in that direction. Then he moved closer to her ear, and in a quiet voice so that only she could hear, told the girl to ask the emperor to marry her. Celeste was incredibly surprised to hear this. She was immediately hot and sweaty. She glanced at the man and wondered what he was talking about, and he explained that this was the only way to escape from the Calext and save his life. This frightened the girl even more, for she had not told anyone about her sentence and did not understand how he knew about it. The man looked her straight in the eye and, smiling, told her to risk it. The girl still couldn't figure out what to do, she couldn't guess how he'd even realized that she wanted to leave this horrible place. It was as if he'd looked into her soul or read her mind. Celeste realized that it would be absolutely useless to deny anything. So she wondered what to do if he said no. Turkin said that in that case, she should offer something he simply couldn't refuse. But the girl replied that she had nothing of the sort. He glimpsed at her and said that he had provided her with a good plan and it was up to her to decide how and what to do from there. The girl didn't really like that answer, because she couldn't make such a responsible decision alone, without having anything behind her back. But Celeste calmed down a little. She thought about the fact that she should be able to at least propose to him. She took small steps toward that celebrity table, and wondered why his assistant had suggested the option so abruptly. She walked further and further away and realized that now was not a good time to be thinking about such a thing, and decided to leave it for later. At the moment, she has one task to accomplish, to survive, and in order to do that, she must become the Empress of Kalinev. She started walking towards him with a very serious expression on her face. The girl thought she would give him what he wanted first. As the man poured the wine, she thought about the fact that Batizo's wish was that of the ruler of a powerful country, the land of the Black Wing of Kaliniv, a nation that was constantly expanding its holdings. Celeste thought of Rafe making a disgruntled face at his own banquet. She had the feeling that Batiza had come on his own initiative and couldn't even refuse him. 
and this to the girl can only mean that the man wishes to get the entire Kalex Empire soon. As the girl approached the table, the other guests had already dispersed to dance, and Batizo sat alone at the table. The girl just stood there looking at him for a while. He spoke first and said she could sit down next to him. He put the wine bottle next to him and said that she must have something to say. So he asked Celeste to sit down so they could talk about it quietly. The girl curtsied before him and thanked his highness for such a favor. Batizo didn't react in any way, he just sat there looking at her. Then the girl realized that she had to sit down and sat down right in front of him. As she looked around, she noticed that there was absolutely no one even occupying the seats next to him. This was the table that had obviously been given special attention, for it was filled with more food and drink than all the others. Celeste, while the maids circled around her as they left plates and utensils for her, realized that he was completely uninvited to this place. It was more like an invasion. They were silent for a while. The girl spoke first and asked what had brought him to Calix. He held up a wine glass and waved for her to drink the air, but he didn't say anything back. Celeste clenched her fists under the table and then asked His Majesty to take her as his wife. She decided that getting straight to the point would be a better solution than making useless small talk. The man was silent for a while. Then, pouring wine into his glass, he said that it was a rather unexpected proposal on her part, and it's not like she even waited for a response and made such an offer, a rather important one. After that, he remained silent and just stared at the girl. Celestia felt a little uneasy, but she realized that she could not back down. Then the girl said that if he did agree to it, she would give him this whole country. She, looking him straight in the eye, added that all of Calix would be in his hands. Celestia really needed this agreement, because she couldn't do it otherwise. However, his shock passed quickly enough, and he immediately started smiling, but still didn't say anything. The girl looked at him and asked if he wasn't eager to get Calix, because as far as she knew, he was. Batizo said in a serious voice, putting the glass back on the table. Apparently she didn't know who he even was. And then he added that the empire would be his, even without marrying the princess. A simple conversation with Calix's operator would be enough, and he could have her right now. Celeste, hearing this, mentally wished him luck, for she knew that the emperor would not give up the whole country during a simple conversation, except partially. Then she said she knew that very well. However, he will not get the whole of Calix, and asked if his ambition is so small that he does not want to get the whole country at once. Celeste spoke confidently and added that she had not encountered this personally. However, war would require quite a lot of time, money, and avoidable casualties. And even after winning, his empire won't get away with it. She will also be accused of many deeds, and it is not a fact that he will be able to get even what he wants. So in that case, she offers her help to Kelenev and escape from what she just said, and get all of Calix in one go, and without sacrifice. She herself at that moment thought that she was doing the right thing, and the bait was cast. Now she had to wait for his verdict. Batizo, pouring an additional portion of wine into his glass, said that apparently the princess did not value her own country very much, since she was ready to give it away so easily. She lowered her head and asked, in a sad voice, if he knew of her situation for the news that had reached Kaliniev was not an easy rumor. The girl looked him straight in the eye and asked him, if he were in her place, whether he would like such a country. But he suddenly said it wasn't enough to just sell it to strangers. Celeste smiled and said that she actually didn't know that His Majesty was such a moral man, and after saying those words, sipped the wine he poured for her. The emperor was silent for a while. After that, he couldn't hold back his laughter and began to mock her very loudly. It made the girl very angry. She realized that he was very good at embarrassing people and making them feel out of place. After calming down from his tantrum, the emperor replied that the princess did not really have such opportunities. However, she objected and said that he could give them to her. After thinking for a while, Batizo said that now he understood why she needed this position of empress. However, he said that the princess was too young, and he did not want to have a wife who would have to learn a lot of things. Celeste realized that everything was going the way it should, 
and smiled and said that there was no problem at all. She was a fast enough learner. When he heard those words, he looked at her slyly and asked if she really thought so. She didn't even know what kind of training he meant. The girl didn't react in any way. She realized that she had no other option anyway. So she doesn't care, but how much he hopes she doesn't. She just wants him to agree, and she doesn't need more than that. After a while of silence, the emperor raised his glass up and said that this was a promise she would have to fulfill. When Celeste heard this, she knew immediately that everything had gone as it should, and was glad that he had agreed to the plan after all. After that, they clinked glasses, and the girl said she would definitely keep her word. Turkin, who was standing nearby and had heard the conversation, was very happy when he heard the news. He, too, had hoped that she would succeed. Quite a few hours had passed since then, and it had already gotten dark before the street. The girl was returning from the ball to her home. She was incredibly happy that she'd succeeded in doing what she'd planned. She didn't want to imagine what would have happened if it had gone wrong. Now, she could breathe a sigh of relief and not think about those things. As she walked on, she felt a sharp pain in her feet. Celeste immediately stopped and took off her shoes to see what was wrong. In fact, she had been so worried all this time that she hadn't even paid attention to the pain. When she calmed down now, she noticed that her shoes were rubbing her feet, and that it hurt. She moved closer to the bench to take a break, and it surprised her how much they rubbed against her. After all, she'd just been sitting there all this time, not even dancing at the ball. When she sat down on the bench, she just rested for a while. After that, she decided to take off her shoes to let her feet air out a little, as they were very hot. As soon as the girl did so, she noticed that they were all red, and even above her feet were swollen. This surprised her. She didn't know that shoes could be so damaging. Well, at that moment someone suddenly approached her. The girl, because she was so absorbed in looking at her feet, didn't even notice it. In fact, it was Turkan. He bowed and said that she had done a very good job when she proposed. Celeste jumped on the spot in surprise. When she saw his face, she exhaled and told him that he had scared her, asking him to show signs of presence in the future so that her heart wouldn't stop with fear. The man looked her straight in the eye and said, smiling, apparently she just didn't hear them. But then suddenly he shifted his gaze to her bare legs and realized something was wrong. He asked if she was okay, if she needed help. The girl started to put her shoes back on and said that everything was fine. She had some chafing just because of the new shoes, nothing wrong with it. She then decided to change the subject and looked at Turkan and said she wanted to ask him something. The man allowed her to do so. In fact, he too was curious as to what she wanted to ask him. Celeste then inquired if Mr. Batizo was aware that she would propose to him. Turkan replied in a calm voice that of course he knew about it. Only Calix remained in the dark. She then wondered if the answer might have changed from what she would offer. The man did not answer clearly. He smiled awkwardly and said that, of course, there could be such a possibility, but he didn't know for sure. Celeste exhaled a sigh of relief then and realized that it was basically to be expected that Batizo would be checking up on her, even though it was a desperate situation with no choice left, but she's still not happy about it at all. The girl then asked if that was how the plan was conceived for Mr. Batizo to come to the Empire to receive the offer. Turkan, continuing to smile, said that it could be said to be partially true. The girl thought at that moment that perhaps Turkan had found out that she would put Calix on the line, which was why she had told her to propose to him. But then Celeste realized it didn't seem like it, but she was still incredibly annoyed by the feeling, as if he could see right through her thoughts. It's moments like that when you start to feel like some kind of piece on a chessboard. She was starting to get annoyed. So she asked him to leave, because she wanted some rest and privacy. In fact, she's only getting more tired around him. Celeste smiled thoughtfully and said that he could go and rest for a while too, and began to rub her swollen ankles so that they wouldn't hurt so much, because she had to get home somehow. Turkin, of course, had no intention of leaving. He watched the girl suffer and stood there for a while thinking about something. Then he stepped closer and took her foot in his hands. The girl, sensing this, began to shout indignantly, asking what he was doing in the first place. Turkin apologized and said that he understood she was wearing them for the first time, but he didn't think they would rub so badly. 
She whispered that it was okay and asked that he let go of her legs because she was too embarrassed about the whole thing. She tried to pull her leg out of his hands, but she couldn't. He quickly grabbed her and held her tightly, telling her to stop twitching. Turkin then looked her straight in the eye and replied that he had to serve the princess, and so he acts accordingly. She began to speak as quietly as possible so that no one would hear them in case, and Celeste turned from side to side, asking if all servants of the imperial family had to do such a thing, and adding that they might be misunderstood if they were seen together after all. The guy continued to massage her feet and smiled at her concern and said he'd noticed that people hardly ever came to this place. Then she gave up and realized that it would be useless to resist. The girl was actually higher in status, but Turkin still did as he pleased. But still, she was able to notice that her legs felt a little better after his massage, so there wasn't even anything to say. She couldn't tell him. But at that moment their idol was interrupted by someone's voices. One of them was male, who turned to the girl who was just running up to the place and said that he was there. The stranger immediately giggled and said that now she knew where he was. The man explained that he had found a path that even the caretaker of the garden did not walk on. Celeste, along with Turkin, immediately crouched down so that these people wouldn't notice them. The girl turned to the man in a whisper and asked him what they should do in such a situation. He pointed somewhere off to the side and suggested that they hide behind that tree, for there they would not be seen. They immediately ran over to the other side so that this unfamiliar couple certainly wouldn't catch them. When they sat down in the bushes, they were able to unload in front of this strange couple. The girl said that there were a lot of people at the banquet that day and she was worried. However, the man only laughed and told her not to be afraid because hardly any people went into this garden, so they certainly wouldn't be noticed. At that moment, his hands began to move down her waist and slowly unbuttoned her elegant dress from behind. The man's lips gently kissed her shoulders and went lower and lower. The girl giggled with excitement and wondered what would happen if someone saw them. Celeste, when she saw all this, blushed even more. She was very worried, not realizing what they were doing. She was too embarrassed to see all of this, so she immediately turned the other way and hid behind a tree, covering her mouth with her hands for fear of making any sounds. Then they began to hear various obscene noises from that sweet couple. The girl almost screamed with pleasure, and Celeste didn't understand why it had to happen when it was just the two of them. At this point, she really hoped that it would be over quickly, in order to not hear those horrible sounds again. But at that moment, she suddenly felt someone's hands touch her ears, and the sounds quieted. Turning her head to the side, she saw it was Turkin. He started to cover her ears with his hands so she wouldn't be afraid and so she wouldn't feel so uncomfortable. For a while, they just sat in silence and looked at each other. The girl didn't understand what was going on or why he did it at all. Then Turkin suddenly looked out from behind the tree to see if it was all over there or not yet. However, he then quickly turned away and looked at Celestia to say that they hadn't left yet. The girl was uncomfortable for a while but then they were so close that she could even see every freckle on his face. It calmed her down. At that moment, she wondered why on earth he kept misleading her. It didn't make any sense. His gaze was completely devoid of emotion, which was constantly directed just at her. That now, when she looks into those eyes, she notices this incredible and unique color. For the first time, she could see them, for they were so close together. They were red, she had never seen. Ruby. Assumed, however, that it was probably as beautiful as his eye color. At this point she immediately turned away from his face, not realizing what she was even thinking. But then, in a glimpse, she began to look at him anyway, and at that moment she realized that she was beginning to hear the sound of her heart too clearly as he covered her ears. And that sound grew stronger and stronger, and Sergei only took one look at the man. All this time Turkin was looking somewhere to the side. Afterward, however, he turned, and uncovering her ears, said that now they seemed to be gone. She was still confused by her thoughts and feelings. However, when he asked if she could hear him, she immediately came to her senses. Celestia said she could hear him just fine. Celestia added that she should get up and leave, at which point she assumed that he probably only cared for her because she was above him in status. 
she couldn't really understand him. One moment, he was being very caring and gentle. The next moment, his gaze was filled with coldness and even hatred. The girl got up from the ground and, ruffling her dress from the grass, replied that it was better to leave this place already. Turkin carefully asked her if her legs were hurting. The girl replied that they were fine, and on the contrary, now she wanted to walk a little. For a while he just stared at her and watched her carefully try to skim her dress of the remnants of earth and grass. Then he helped her shake off the last of the dust and replied that the members of the imperial family didn't really do such a thing personally. Celeste, hearing this, was very surprised and thought about what they were even allowed to do then. But at that moment, he held out her hand and suggested that she should go already. After all, it was late at night. The girl at this point started to worry, because they actually hardly know each other, so she's not sure she can trust him. But she put her hand in his and realized that at the moment, she thought he was the kindest man in the world. They set off towards the forest, and Turkin talked about business, saying that they would start talking about marriage right after the banquet. The girl was very much surprised and asked, Is it really so soon? Some more time had passed since then and Emperor Batizo had come specifically to speak to Rafe about it. They sat and drank tea, and then the man, smiling, asked if it wouldn't be for the best, for it seemed to him that the first union of Kelenev and Kalix was a rather important event. Rafe, who was sitting next to his half-sister, was very worried, for he realized that he was powerless in this case, and said that it was a bit of a surprise decision. The girl, however, had been silent the whole time, and realized that this conversation had taken place even more quickly than she had anticipated. Batizo asked in surprise, Does he not want this union? But Rafe replied that that's not really what it's all about. He was just really surprised by the marriage news. They were silent for a while. And then Raf said that they should hold the ceremony in the Kelenev, and he would send a delegation to congratulate them. But he would not be able to attend. When Batizo heard this, he was not surprised in the slightest. He smiled and asked, Isn't showing up for the princess's wedding? It was actually very difficult for him to understand it. However, since the Calix had such traditions, there was nothing he could do about it. Rafe glanced at his sister and said, That's just the way it is. He would like to have a grand ceremony here, but it breaks his heart that he can't do anything about it. After that, he looked at the emperor again and put his hand on his heart and said that he was surely aware of the princess's humble background, so there was no way to change that. Batizo leaned against the back of the couch without much enthusiasm and said that if that was indeed the case, it was no big deal. Rafe was actually incredibly angry about the whole situation. He was annoyed when he didn't have dominion over someone, and this was exactly that. But then he suddenly decided to change the subject a little. He turned to the maid and said that the tea was getting cold, so he asked her to bring a new one. The maid immediately came to them and said that of course she would fulfill everything. And Rafe also said that he was popular in the Empire of Garrus, which lay on the eastern continent across the sea. He tried to divert the emperor's attention in as many ways as he could. While the maid brought new tea, the man asked if he had ever heard that Garza used to be Khalid, but without waiting for an answer, he added that even though that country was destroyed a hundred years ago, still some say that the empire inherited the blood of the fairies, and that may well be why their tea is so good. Rafe took his cup and bringing it to his mouth, added that apparently the Khalidians didn't have much left, because only the imperial palace gets the leaves. He turned to his guest and told him to be sure to try it. After all, they are very hard to get. Celeste, who was also poured the tea, began to examine it carefully and was very surprised that it was so valuable. Batizo didn't say anything to that. He just sat there, staring at Rafe without averting his gaze. The man, after a while, looked at his guest and asked if he didn't like the tea, since he hadn't even tasted it. And the girl who had just tried this tea was not sure how delightful and rare it was, for it was more like a common herb. The emperor sighed heavily at this point and said that that wasn't really the point. He only uses what is made in his country. At this point, he set down a cup of tea and said that even his tea he only drinks his own. Batizo looked at the landlord with a smile and said that one should always be on guard. 
Rafe, too, began to smile slyly and, sipping from his cup of tea, said those were very wise words. The girl who sat quietly watching all this was glad, for she enjoyed watching Rafe unable to do anything to him. Celeste chose marriage because of her position. However, this option actually turned out to be the right one. When evening came, she returned home, where her maid was already waiting for her. The girl immediately started packing her things into her suitcase. She told the maid that she would probably be traveling to Keligny the next day and wondered if she would be traveling with her. Torega, who stood beside the lady, said that of course she would go, for she could not leave the princess alone in a strange land. They had been together for a long time and had been through a lot. The maid smiled and began to help her put her things away and added that she wanted to die next to her mistress. The girl was very touched by these words. Tears came to her eyes, and she thanked the maid for everything. In fact, she would have gone insane alone in the dungeon a very long time ago if it weren't for her assistant, the maid, so she is incredibly grateful to her. They started to hug each other in gratitude and love, when suddenly some man burst into their house and they immediately turned around to see what was going on. This unexpected guest was Rafe. He looked incredibly angry, and his whole face was red because he had run straight to the cabin. He looked at his half-sister and said that she must be glad to death that she was leaving, and wondered how she had managed to seduce Emperor Kaliniev in the first place. Celeste immediately tensed up. She smelled the pungent smell of wine as soon as he entered the room, and realized that he was very drunk. The girl replied that there was nothing special about it. Apparently she was just to his liking. Rafe suddenly laughed and wondered if she really thought that, and if she even knew how beautiful Kaliniev's previous girlfriends were and how she could even think she could like him. But then he looked suddenly at the photograph which stood by the girl on the little table, and after a moment's thought, he replied that there was nothing surprising in it, for her mother had been the same. This was the woman who had had an affair with the previous emperor, and it was unknown if she even had imperial blood in her veins. He addressed Celestia directly in the last sentence. The girl was very angry at these words. She was not going to listen to any more insults to herself or to her mother, so she shouted loudly and asked him to stop saying those terrible things. Rafe, who continued to stand on the threshold of the house, suddenly hummed and asked if she already dared to order him around. However, he said that she might not be arrogant, or she had decided that she would become an empress after she got married. The girl insisted on her own way. She asked him to go to his room, for it was quite late at night. But her brother went on and asked if she really thought the nobles of that country would accept some low-grade girl. The girl was starting to get incredibly angry. She clenched her fist and said that it didn't matter whether she became an empress or not, it was completely indifferent. Celeste started yelling at her brother and replied that the most important thing to her was to not stay in that place and see his hateful face. Rafe didn't tolerate such bickering from his sister so he swung his arm at her and was about to hit her. The girl was already prepared for this blow and covered her face with her hands so that it would not hurt so much. However, a few seconds passed and she couldn't understand why she couldn't feel anything. Then she opened her eyes. She looked around and saw her maid lying on the floor, the one Rafe had hit. But at this point, he started yelling at her, asking how she even dared to block his path. The man stepped on her neck with his boot and started pressing there asking if she really thought the stupid fake was the mistress she was serving. The maid didn't expect such a reaction from him. She started to cover her face with her hands so he wouldn't bruise her. Then Celestia ran up and started to cover her with her body. Tears came to the girl's eyes. She begged His Majesty to stop doing that, swung at her and said that at least the services should have a head on their shoulders if their mistress was an idiot. Celestia endured the pain of the blows, she figured there wasn't much left. Be patient, it will be over. She could already see blood on her back, oozing through her white shirt, for her brother had struck her with a heeled boot. Torega tried to move her mistress away from his blows and tearfully told her to move away. And then she turned to his majesty, saying that she was the one who had made the mistake and asked him not to hit her. The enraged Rafe was ready to kill them both, but then his attention was distracted for he heard someone's footsteps behind him. And then Emperor Batizo and his assistant appeared on the doorstep. 
The man looked very serious and asked Rafe what he was doing. The boy realized he was making a mistake. He felt ashamed that the emperor had seen it. And then, in a trembling voice, asked him what he was doing here in the first place. But Tizo didn't answer his question. He started to walk closer to him and looked at him with all the hatred in the world and said that he didn't really think he would see it with his own eyes. He had heard of such a thing, however, to see it. Rafe suddenly laughed and said that they had actually had a little conflict, which was why he had to be brought before him in such a scruffy state. He also inquired as to the occasion for which the emperor had come to this place at such a late hour. Celestia was at this moment helping her maid up and asked if she was all right or nowhere hurt, but Tarega only kept saying that it was her fault and begged her mistress's forgiveness. Batizo, at this time, said that he had come to talk about scheduling with his fiancée, of course, and certainly didn't expect to see him in this place at this late hour. Rafe didn't know what to make of it at that moment. So, averting his gaze, he said that he'd actually come for the same thing. He looked at his sister, who had blood all over her back, and said that he was actually very sad to answer that she was going to leave soon, so he was a little nervous. But then a maid suddenly intervened in their conversation. He tried to justify himself and said that apparently she didn't like the fact that he was getting her mistress, so she poured over him, not knowing her place. And the princess was very dear to her. That was why everything had turned out in such a ridiculous and terrible way. But Tizo, who stopped listening to him after the second sentence, said he had some rather long excuses. The guy asked what justification meant. Then he added that it was just that the Lord had gotten it all wrong. The emperor waved his hand at him and asked if he could be wrong about anything at all. He came even closer to Rafe and said that now he understood how an imperial person known for the greatest dignity punishes his servants. Rafe's legs were trembling for he realized his mistake and he did not even look at the emperor. But Tizo, in turn, in a quiet and angry voice, told him to go away if he had nothing else to do, for he had to speak to his fiancée. It made the man very angry. However, he realized that he should not interfere. So squinting, he said that, all right, so be it, he would go, and they could socialize. He then glimpsed a glimpse of his sister, and turning to the princess, wished her good night. She looked at him with a hateful glare. Celestia, when she saw her brother leave, noticed that he no longer looked like he was drunk. She didn't really think she would sober up from Batiso's mere presence. When the man had gone far enough, the girl stood up and helped the maid up. Then she turned to his majesty and thanked him for everything. Batiso, remaining in the same place, said no thanks, and also inquired if Liana was all right. The girl replied that she was fine, and also asked what exactly he wanted to discuss with her. The boy glimpsed her and answered in a serious voice that they were leaving for the Kaliev in the early morning. Celestia asked how long it would take to travel. He replied that it would take 15 days if they traveled non-stop, which of course they wouldn't do. He said they would travel for a week to 10 days in the carriage and Turkin would take care of the rest. The guy behind smiled and nodded in agreement. At that moment, Batizo remembered her split back and said that they would go anyway, even if she was in a lot of pain, he didn't care about that. Celeste agreed with him. Her appearance was very tired. The girl realized at that moment that he was not asking her at all, but just notifying her, and she wondered if she would be able to last all these days. Batizo, turning to leave, said that in that case he would consider the conversation over. Then he turned to his assistant and told them to leave. As they started to leave, the girl thought about the fact that the emperor certainly has manners. However, she gets the feeling as if he even looks at them with pity, but she knew there was nothing she could do about it. This relationship was based on a contract, and she couldn't and wouldn't want anything more than that. The next morning, Turkin, as the emperor had promised, arrived early enough, for they were all ready to depart. The girl and her maid were ready and went outside with their belongings. Upon seeing the man, the maid immediately said that in that case she would be taking things out and went to do so. Celeste turned to the man at this point and said that she didn't really have that many, so it would take almost no time at all. Turkin said there was no problem at all. After that, when he saw the girl's suitcase in her hands, he came over and took it from her. 
She was very surprised at the gesture, but thanked him. But the man, going to the carriage, replied in a cold-blooded voice that the members of the imperial family did not have to thank their servant. He explained that they are just doing the job they are supposed to do. There was nothing special about it. Special also noticed that the girl was holding another small purse. He picked it up. Celestia immediately said she could carry it herself. However, the guy said it was his job, so don't let her deny it. I was about to thank him, and when I saw the angry look in his eyes, I cut my sentence short. She was very surprised that she couldn't express her admiration out loud, even just to thank a person. She realized that she still had so much to learn during this time. Just before she left, she met with the nobles and Rafe one last time to say goodbye. There was a rather formal setting, as well as members of the imperial family pretending to be angels. In plain sight, the farewell was completely meaningless, really. In front of everyone, Rafe wished the girl good health and said he really hoped she would have a good life there. And after that to his ear, he regretted his luck to live in Kelenev. It was a rather formidable phrase on his part. It certainly didn't scare the girl. She thought she could calm down, for she would surely survive. And in time, she would return to the land of the Kalex to ask them for the death of her mother. In the meantime, she wishes them all the best. Let them enjoy life while they can. Just like that, a full twenty days had passed on the trip, and they continued on their way. In the middle of the forest, the coachman suddenly stopped the wagon and said they would take a little break and then drive on. The maid immediately set the table for the princess and told her to eat more. They sat down in a small clearing somewhere in the forest. Seeing Madame's battered face, she said she thought so. Her injured back made it too hard for her to sit in the carriage. But Celeste, who was finishing her portion, replied that she had taken special medication so she could be patient. Then suddenly, when she heard a familiar voice, she immediately raised her head. This voice said that she was healthier than she looked at first glance. When the girl looked over, she saw Mr. Batizo standing right in front of her. True immediately said hello to him, and the man asked if she could hold out before the medicine all this time. 